people, it's your girl Adiola. Let's start with the good news. Starting in January of next year, anyone with a passport from an African country can now get a visa on arrival in Nigeria. How cool is that? So Nigeria is introducing the issuance of visas upon arrival at the point of entry to anyone holding a passport from any African country. That's amazing. I believe that would foster economic growth and encourage more Africans to visit Nigeria. Now, while this is commendable and I honestly commend them for this i also think it's important to fix the country that people are coming to visit okay i mean people naturally want to visit a country with good roads with stable electricity with good hospitals and job opportunities honestly i'm really excited about that a uh, huge kudos to the young government for that but i really think the best pr is to fix the country so that people can actually come also is there a way of measuring when people come anyway let's not get into that there's a reason why a lot of nigerians are leaving the country no offense to the Nigerian government but I think it's important to fix the country itself and let there be freedom of expression and stop this double standard in how politicians are treated compared to how other Nigerians are treated. For example, look at Senator Oju Zokalu. The man has been sentenced to 12 years in prison for stealing 7 billion naira. That is more than 19 million dollars. I mean, that in itself is a problem if you only get 12 years for stealing 7 billion naira in a country where a young guy was sentenced to death for stealing a cell phone. Okay. But you know, to our shock, despite that he's in prison, the Senate announced that Oju Zokalu will still be getting paid his full salary and allowances while in prison. I'm like, wait, what? What's this supposed to mean? Somebody stole 7 billion naira. You said that you put him in prison, but he's still getting paid full salary and allowances. Why do we like to deceive ourselves? They also said that his uh, Senate position will not be vacant. They still consider him employed. Meanwhile, the first lady went on social media crying out that the presidential spokesperson, Alhaji Gabashewu, has crossed his boundaries by meddling in her family business. We were like, uh, say what? She also accused Gabashewu of being used by the cabal, precisely Mamandora. So, um, me, I'm a little bit confused, your excellency, you know, well, I'm, a, I'm a bit confused to see Madam First Lady running to social media for help when she's also trying to control social media. <laughs> Madam, as much as we pity you and your family drama, uh, actually it's none of our business, you can't run to the same social media that you're trying to censor, I mean, that you're trying to control, defending you and castigating Gabashewu, maybe consider that hate speech for which your husband's government is trying to start killing people. So you understand, madam, this is something you could have settled in the other room, by the way. I don't think you needed to shout out about this. Now, speaking of her husband, a coalition of civil society groups has given Buhari a 14-day ultimatum to release some yellow show and all prisoners of conscience i'm like okay so we're counting down although i don't know why it has to be 14 days just just me no offense i was expecting them to say something like with immediate alacrity release these people so as it is now from additional presidential spokesperson said that millions and millions of nigerians are not bothered by show arrest arrest from what we are seeing so far a lot of nigerians are not happy uh, with this development what do you have to say to nigerians on this I don't particularly agree with you. When you say a lot of Nigerians, you know that all this noise may be coming from less than 100,000 Nigerians. There are millions and millions and millions of people who are not bothered. Is that true? He actually said that only the minority are bothered. The opinion of a local minority, and you, you, you then conclude that the country is not is in an opera. That is not correct. Ah, Uncle Femi. Ha, you know, in case you are watching, a you call. It's not your fault. You need a salary, no so That is why you've lost your conscience. By the way, the minority that Femi Adeshino is referring to includes the US, the UK, and the EU. Meanwhile, the presidency has replied by telling them to mind their business. It's so funny that when it comes to medical treatment abroad, borrowing money, sending their children to school abroad, the same presidency adores the US. US, UK, and the EU. But when it comes to human rights abuses, presidency tells them to mind their business. The devil is a liar. Which is why a lot of people right now are saying that Buari may not honor this 14-day ultimatum. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think he would honor this 14-day ultimatum? As a matter of fact, the federal government has now frozen Sahara Reporter's bank account. I guess so that they don't pay their workers. So why would they do that? You know, all these are things that dictators will do, which is why a lot of people are praising punch newspapers for releasing an editorial where they said that they will no longer refer to Buari as a 
president, because he has not been democratic and he's no longer acting as a democratic government, they said that henceforth they would refer to him as a military general that he is, who has become a dictator. In fact, they also included a cartoon that shows Buhari's government as a military government violating human rights. So thank you so much, guys. Honestly, thanks to Punch Newspaper for that punch. We really like it. Unlike our vice president, who did not say anything until they gave him an award, you know, this anti-corruption award at the Waliso Inca Center for Investigative Journalism. First of all, I don't know whose idea that was to give it to him, but that's besides the point. Second of all, he declined the award saying that it's in view of the development on Friday in the case of Shore. He said he thinks he will be insensitive and inappropriate to attend the ceremony. Okay, so I think that's good what he said, but as a vice president, Esa, in case you're watching, you can't do more. You speak as if you have no power, as if you have no control whatsoever. Should be the other time when DSS blocked the Senate, you were the one that fired the head of DSS with immediate alacrity. What happened to you, Mr. Osimbajo? Like, for real, what happened? If truly you are not part of what's happening in this government, then step down and you will have some dignity. In fact, if you want to run for office after stepping down, people may vote for you because they believe that you're a man of integrity. But let me know what you guys think about Osimbajo's silence and him refusing an award in view of show SRS. Is that all that he can do? Anyway, you guys know that much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So moving on to South Africa, ladies and gentlemen, the new Miss Universe is 26-year-old Zozbini Tunzi from South Africa. The new Miss Universe is South Africa. age where people are bleaching i mean this should be an inspiration for all my african sisters that you are beautiful as you are girlfriend won miss universe without bleaching or wearing fake hair you know she won miss universe with low cost ah, as in no offense to wigs as you guys know <laughs> No offense to wigs, you know, but there are some people that we never get to see their real hair at all. Like for real, I have some friends whom I've never seen their real hair and we've known each other for a long time. I mentioned this to a friend of mine recently and she let out her hair for the first time and I was like, what is wrong with you? Girlfriend has full healthy long hair and i said why do you hide this under a wig we africans we need to embrace our god-given beauty you know you don't have to change who you are for you to feel beautiful or for you to feel accepted whoever doesn't accept you unless you use fake things i don't know if they're the best friends for you <laughs> i'm just saying it's okay to keep you real and i love what she said in this video i grew up in a world where a woman who looks like me with my kind of skin and my kind of hair was never considered to be beautiful and I think that it is time that that stops today. I want children to look at me and see my face, and I want them to see their faces reflected in mine. Oh. Thank you so much, girl. She's an inspiration. Anyway, we're so proud of her. Congratulations to her. You guys know not much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. And moving on to Syria alone, I'm so excited to tell you guys that ECOWAS Court of Justice has ruled that not allowing pregnant girls to go to school is discriminatory. I said amen, somebody. Henceforth, that law which was instituted in 2015 in Syria alone is now to be revoked so that girls, whether pregnant or not, can be allowed to go to normal schools and write examinations. That's amazing. They started burning girls after the Ebola outbreak in Syria alone. That was a time which all schools were closed and so many girls especially those who lost their parents or their family members in the outbreak were raped and taken advantage of because a lot of them were on their own upon going back to school with pregnancy the government burned them we don't ban boys for impregnating girls why are we burning girls for getting pregnant because they didn't do it by themselves i'm so happy that these girls cannot go back to school i'm really proud of all the activists who have stood by these girls to fight for them such as chenoba god bless you guys we really appreciate you and thank you so much Equus. you guys not doing much guess what i'm just keeping it real by the way those of you that like to show up late to church this is a special announcement for those of you that like to show up late to church move closer you better be thanking god that your pastor is not pastor paul muanguzi of uganda ladies and gentlemen this man literally flogged his church members who missed church services or came late <laughs> mm. eh? 
Kaukwe duki za kuila. Masete nge no. Goodness. Even if you're late to your government office, you don't get beat up for it. I don't know when this started happening in churches. Now, according to a Kenyan FM station, Pastor Paul is actually an ex-convict who was in prison in 2013. But then he broke out of jail in 2014 and ran to Zimbabwe, where he was hiding until he was later deported back to Uganda to finish his prison term with an additional two years. This was Pastor William Mwanguzi soon after his arrest in 2010 for impersonating state house officials. And this is him today at Katwe police station after being nabbed at the Ministry of Internal Affairs as he awaited a passport bearing his new name of Muamba Paul. Police say Mwanguzi, who had since relocated to Eldoret in Kenya from where he operates another church, has been a wanted man in connection to a shooting incident at Natete and possessing a gun illegally. Now, my people, I think it's very, very important for you to read your Bible so you can know the truth for yourself. I mean, God has given us common sense. Let us use it. And common sense is not a common. <laughs> Good luck to his church members, by the way, because they will need it. You guys know not much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So moving on to Ghana, my Charlie brothers and sisters, I've been begging you guys for a long time, like seriously, please find a solution to this menace, by, <laughs> to the menace by this man who now calls himself an angel. I'm talking about Pastor Obinim, now known as Angel Obinim. I've talked about him several times on this show. He so much believes that he's an angel to the point where they now paint a picture of him as an angel as the backdrop at his churches. <laughs> This is insane. So lately, the man of God is now laying next to women in the name of praying for them to help them find a husband right in the church. <laughs> I'm coming to choose your husband for you. Yes. Your helper. Yes. And let me finish. Um, so that lady said that she was in Saudi Arabia where she was forced to work for two years without getting paid and then she was jailed in Riyadh for two years after she was abused. So she said that she prayed to Angel Obinim. She didn't say that she prayed to God. <laughs> she said she prayed to Angel Obinim. Now people can pray to him. She spent two weeks at the prison before she remembered that she had been following you on YouTube so she knows what you can do. So according to her, she prayed the prayer to Angel Obinim. I don't have anybody in Ghana and Saudi Arabia. Please, I'm helpless. Come and help me. That was the prayer she prayed in the prison. That night, she said she was sleeping. All of a sudden, you appear in her dream. And then that he showed up in her dream telling her that she will be released in five days. And five days after, just like she saw in her dream, a Saudi woman came to bail her in prison. This woman gave her travel documents, plane tickets, in order for her to get back to Ghana. And the Saudi lady told her that she's actually Indian Obinim. She's just disguised as a Saudi woman. Then the Saudi Arabian woman led her to the airport and asked her to sit down. So the Saudi Arabian woman went through the process and came back, held her hand, sent her to departure hall, and told her, I want to tell you something. Make sure you don't shout. The lady you are seeing here, it is not me, it is Angel Obinim. Physical, physical. <laughs> You know, I guess that's for those of you that don't believe. So now the man of God is not just an angel, but he can show up in your dream. But not just that, he can disguise himself as a Saudi woman. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, while he was praying for this woman, for some reason, he decided to lay next to her to pray for her to find her husband. Yeah, let your leg come here. Uh -huh. Your legs here, your head there. I'm coming to choose your husband for you. Yes. Your helper. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Makes sense, and what has that to do with her being in Saudi Arabia? <laughs> so her problem is finding us. I don't know. I don't know. Was it finding a husband or finding a job, living a decent life? But in any case, this is another video of the same pastor praying for another woman to find a husband. <laughs> See, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. This is 
we need to stop? They didn't just stop all this nonsense in the house of God. Like seriously, what does prayer have to do with pastor laying next to women in church? <laughs> I don't get it. I once showed you guys the Ghanaian pastor that kissed a woman in the name of deliverance in the church. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. You don't have to play that. They, they know what I'm talking about. Anyway, uh, we will continue to shout out that church members should please start using their medulla oblongata. God, there's nothing against you using your common sense. But anyway, you guys not doing much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So I know this is not an African news, but did you guys hear that Finland's new prime minister is 34-year-old Sanna Marin? Ladies and gentlemen, meet Finland's transportation minister who is about to be sworn in as the prime minister of Finland. I mean, the fact that this lady has been a member of the parliament since 2015 is amazing and a transportation minister, like for real, okay? And she's about to become the world's youngest prime minister. Not only that, she will be leading a center-left coalition with four other parties all headed by women and three of these five women are under the age of 35 that's amazing you know let me know what you guys think about this this is power shifting to young people power shifting to women why are women in finland able to be in the realm of power and we're yet to see such in so many african countries i know that finland's population is only 5.5 million but i honestly believe it has nothing to do with their population because a lot of people have been saying it's because of their population i mean look at equatorial guinea where their president has been in power since 1979 equatorial guinea is 1.2 million people. Gabon, where the president recently put his son in charge, I told you guys about that. There are 2 million people. Togo is 7 million people. So I don't think that this is about population. Meanwhile, the Gambia is only 2 million people and their vice president and the previous vice president is a woman. Do you think that not having women in realm of power in so many African countries, despite women being half of the population in most of these places, do you think it's the fault of the men? or the women are not determined to be involved, or is it the fault of the system? When will something like this happen in your country? Congratulations to the new prime minister. Anyway, you guys not don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So please, please, before you go, you guys, please listen to this very important announcement. I'm really excited that Send Wave that I advertised for, they've decided to donate $5 each time someone signs up to one foundation that you guys decide. As you guys know, when you use my name, Adela, as promo code, they've been adding $10 or £10 to whatever you've been sending to your loved ones up until the 10th of this month. But now going forward, if you sign up for the first time and you use my name as promo code, they will add $5 to what you're sending to your loved ones, but the remaining $5 dollars is being saved in order to donate it to one foundation that you guys vote for there are four foundations that they are considering right now the first one is youth for technology foundation which runs programs that address skills gaps in established education system they encourage young people to see entrepreneurship as a viable career their training also emphasizes stem subjects in order to help build the foundation for sustainable career choices they also provide financial inclusion and business training to empower women with the skills to manage their own lives, their households, and their businesses. At Youth for Technology Foundation, we invest in young people. We invest in their mothers, the women in the community, as the economic pillars of the societies that we serve. That's amazing. I mean, what they're doing is amazing. This foundation is founded by Unjideka Hari. She's Nigerian. Also, the second foundation that Send Wave is considering is Medics Abroad. This is a foundation that provides healthcare professionals the opportunity to explore and broaden their horizon by traveling and learning within the clinical environment and beyond, especially in Africa. I mean, it's a great foundation founded by Dr. Adana Steineka. I'm sure you guys have seen her videos, her and her husband husband on YouTube. Their YouTube channel is Adana David and they're doing amazing things. They're helping doctors to travel, especially to see different parts of Africa. My name is Dr. Adana Steinaka, the founder and CEO of Medics Abroad. Whatever you see in your textbook, you literally see here. It's made me really appreciate everything we have and it's made me realize that it's important to give back to your society.
Now, the third foundation that they are considering is Aid for Africa, and they are creating libraries in Zambia to serve vulnerable children and youth. Their libraries also serve as safe havens for all children, including children with disabilities and children that are out of school or children with HIV AIDS. So their libraries give these children educational opportunities and a means to improve their literacy levels, their language skills, and their senses of self-worth. I'm like, wow, all these foundations are doing amazing thing. But guess what? We are also on the list. The last foundation that Sandwave is considering their donation to is Kawa Foundation. That is keeping it with Adiola Foundation. <laughs> so we have been working a lot with refugees, providing water, uh, digging boreholes. We've built toilets for refugees. I've talked about that. We've provided solar street lamps. We've provided food for the Boko Haram refugees in Borno State, the herdsmen refugees in Benue State. We've supplied reusable pads for thousands of women. We've provided medications for refugee camps. We've taken uh, doctors, several doctors to refugee camps for medical outreaches. I know that I didn't tell you guys about this, but we also recently gave out five solar cooking stoves at different refugee camps in Benue State. These cooking stoves were donated by a viewer named Karen Simon. These people watched the show and they saw the work that we're doing among the refugees and contacted us that they would like to donate this. And so I would really urge you guys to please patronize them. Please contact them for solar cooker that will enable you to cook without using fossil fuel, without using gas or electricity. How amazing is that? A one-time payment of 45,000 naira, that is about $120, means you no longer need to buy petrol or gas to cook. I think this is the best investment that you can make this Christmas because there's plenty of sun and because it's solar the food cooks very quickly also if you order 10 or more solar cookers at a time they will only charge you 35,000 naira per solar cooker which is less than $100 about $97 if not for the sake of anything the fact that they gave us free cookers for the refugees please patronize them we really appreciate people like that back to what I was saying some other things that we do at Kawa Foundation as you guys are aware is raising money for people who have terminal diseases we also also empower refugees as you guys are aware we've empowered more than 80 uh, Cameroonian refugees in Nigeria now to cut the long story short you guys get to decide which of these four foundations gets the money that send wave wants to donate so please please vote for any foundation that you guys want because they are all doing amazing things although we will appreciate if you vote for Kawa foundation <laughs> We'll do that like we've done in the past we would make sure that everything is transparent and we'll let you know how your money is spent we can definitely use this money okay <laughs> so voting is now open until december 31st please please it will only take you a minute the link is on send waves facebook page please follow them on facebook so click on the link on their facebook page and then it will open up the page where you get to vote and you can click on the foundation of your choice but if you're not on facebook uh this is the link to vote it's very easy there's no need to enter your name or your email they're not gonna ask for your name or your email and as soon as you're done you will see the foundation that is leading you would know if the foundation you voted for is currently leading but the voting goes on till December 31st so don't forget to download Sendwave if you're yet to now you can use this app if you live in the US UK Spain Italy and Ireland you can use it to send money to Nigeria Ghana Tanzania Kenya and Uganda for free without paying any transaction fee and if you use my name Adela as promo code you get five dollars added to whatever you're sending to your loved ones and five dollars goes to a foundation of your choice so you can vote from anywhere in the world by the way you don't have to be using send wave for you to participate in this please please vote <laughs> And for those who may be wondering, what I'm wearing was designed by X Native. I've told you guys about them. This is a Nigerian designer that lives in New York. Her name is Fela, and she designed this. She has designed so many of the outfits that I'm wearing. The good thing is, she's offering you guys a 200% discount if you use my name, Adela, as promo code between now and the end of January. You don't want to miss that opportunity. Guys, you can order something for your women, okay? I mean, Christmas is coming. <laughs> Lastly, don't forget to visit DestoBlingy.com. Like I told you guys, all their pieces of jewelry is presently on a 70% discount if you use the name Adiola as promo code O'Shea and guess what now they are willing to ship anywhere not just the US but if you live outside the US you have to be willing to pay a $15 flat shipping rate and then they will get your jewelry to you so everything is on 70% discount right now on their website you want to take advantage of that before uh, before it goes back to the original price don't forget to vote for us <laughs> don't forget to vote for for Kawa Foundation. All right, y'all, it's been real, and I'm keeping it real right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you're yet to subscribe to my YouTube channel, please be sure that you do that. Until next time, I'm gonna see y'all later. Peace out.